Hey, you guys, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your girl, MB, and I have my girl here with me, your other host, Janelle. Hey, y'all. Okay, so we are being becoming the podcast. So we are a weekly podcast. Episodes drop every Thursday, um, but we talk a little bit about anything and everything. But our main purpose is to help people on their journey to become. So we leave that open-ended for our audience. So you finish that sentence. Whether you're on a journey to, you know, become the best version of yourself, um, whether you're on a journey for, you know, mental clarity, mental wealth, um, if you're trying to, you know, financially, you know, get stable or, you know, work on your, you know, stacking that money, whatever it may be, uh, just, you know, become hopefully the best version of yourself. But anyway, um, we're happy to have you guys here with us. Um, and just so you guys do know, we're not experts, but we are here to do the work. Shout out to all of our listeners, you guys. So we are on all streaming th- platforms. So thank you for listening. But if you want to watch us, trust me, you do want to watch us because Janelle's facial expressions are crazy. I'm crazy over here. There's a lot going on with this podcast. Um, you can go on over to YouTube and go to the I'm Just MB channel and check us out. Um, also want to thank everyone who's listening and watching. You already know how to support us. Either subscribe, follow, like the video. Um, and Janelle, what are we talking about this week? Girl. So everyone has a story to tell. Um, our stories are the experiences we've encountered day in and day out. Yeah. So these stories make up who we are and how we perceive the world. Not all stories have a fairy tale ending in a happily ever after. However, these stories are meant to be shared and passed down to future generations. Some people might find it hard to let people in or even tell their story, but I dare them to communicate and express themselves freely. There's growth and evolution shown within stories. History is told within stories. Faith is renewed through hearing stories. Peace when you've told your truth and even healing is taking place when you tell your story. So today we are talking about the importance of telling our stories. We are thrilled to have our guest speaker, Nigel Marcellus, on the show today. Um, So Nigel, welcome to the show, and we are happy to have you. Yes. First and foremost, let me just start out by saying, y'all have the most official podcast. I mean, y'all had an email ready. Y'all had me sign my signature. Y'all had this whole layout. I said, oh, this this real, this real right here. This real, real right here. You know, you gotta, you, you gotta stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So I'm you already know how it is. I'm loving the energy. Uh, so, as you guys know, Nigel is with us. Let's give you guys just a little bit of background on Nigel. Um, so, me and Janelle personally know Nigel from um, the University of Kentucky, UK. Go Big Blue. Um, we all went to undergrad together, but trust me when I say Nigel does a lot of things. So um, he is a creative, first of all, with experiences in producing uplifting content, creating safe spaces, and personal development training. He has his bachelor's degree in communication. He has his master's in media ventures, and he currently is pursuing his doctorate. He has a passion to change the world as he continues to push his brand and encourages others to walk in the path of their purpose while converting their mess, their math, oh, um, while converting their mess into the message. Tongue twister right there. <laughs> <laughs> he has started many organizations and programs that are still around till this day, like Underground Perspective, so we know that. Um, and the most important thing to know about Nigel is he likes to make people smile, laugh, or think. So again, welcome to the podcast, Nigel. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Y'all made me sound a lot better than I am. I feel like that that intro was fire. No, no. We wouldn't have had you on if you weren't great. So greatness, you already have greatness in you. So Um, we're excited to have you here today. We already told you we're going to talk about storytelling. Um, Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted you to be on for this story specifically. Um, Having conversations with you, like we've all had it recent, a lot of conversations with Clubhouse being out and things like that. Um, I feel like you have a unique way. I don't even want to say unique, but you have like this way of like you're able to like, you know, start a conversation, but continue to engage in it and make it so relatable in itself. So it's like you're so comfortable with telling your own story, but also, you know, asking those probing questions to get other people's stories and helping Mm -hmm. them to, you know, turn that into, like you said, their mess into um, their message. 
So mm. I found that so engaging. So I wanted to talk about that. And also I know um, you're in, you've done, you know, photography um, a lot and then, you, you know, videography and, you know, producing video content. That's really what you um, do a lot of. So that's why I specifically wanted to have you on today for storytelling. So. No, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm really excited to like dive into this conversation because I definitely have a lot of, a lot of thoughts and experiences. So it's, it's always dope to be able to like talk about like, topics like these because i feel like we don't often have this kind of conversation so I, i'm i'm so excited definitely definitely like janelle said um stories have like a message like there's a reason you would tell a story or you can connect with someone but let's mm -hmm. jump right on in so we know you're all about creating safe spaces and helping people share their stories um, amongst other things but how did you get started on this journey like take us back to that moment where you were like this is my path yeah, so, oof, loaded question. Uh, <laughs> for me, I would say like how I got started into this was not by choice. Um, like I, I didn't wake up one day and say like, yo, I, I want to be able to create safe spaces for people. Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of my story and a lot of things that have become my purpose, again, it, it came from like the mess that I went through, like traumatic experience, emotional experience. So for example, like when I was growing up, I was an only child. So I felt as if I didn't have the luxury of having siblings to help guide me or tell me what's right or what's wrong. And a lot of the things that I had to figure out as far as like validation or fitting in or all these different things, I had to learn on the fly, which was emotionally very traumatic because I felt like I always had to be the best version of myself. Mm. Or I had to fit the mold of what other people were looking for. And again, this is I'm not talking about older. I'm talking about when I'm younger. So I'm elementary, middle school. So I'm, I'm the clash clown. Um, I'm trying to get people to laugh. I'm trying to get people to smile. But at the end of the day, people, I'm going to predominantly white schools. Um, I'm one of the only black kids. So like already the dynamic is off. But then mm -hmm. it's me trying to prove myself and be friends with these people who didn't always necessarily see me in the same way. So like growing up, I always felt like I was the, the snapping friend, right? Mm -hmm. it, I'm the friend where like people are thinking of their invite list and they're like, um, oh, Nigel, yeah, let's invite him too. Like I was never the first option. I was always the second or third or, oh, I thought you was just gonna show up and be here. So because of that, I always, Growing up, I didn't feel like I I was chosen, right? I didn't mm. feel like I was worthy of friendships. I didn't feel like I was good enough. And because of that, it, it reached a boiling point for me where I got to a point where I was so low and I was so down that I, I recognized within myself that this is a feeling that I never want other people to feel as long as I can breathe. Like right. if I do anything about it, I'm going to do whatever I can to make people feel like they're not alone or they're by themselves or that they don't have somebody regardless of who they are, or what they do, if they're weird or not, or whatever um, other people are saying, I wanna make people feel safe around me. So the that's one side of the story. And then the other side of the story is when I was younger, the only way I was able to connect with people was being vulnerable right away. Like it had to be mm -hmm. vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Because if I had these surface level conversations, then people forgot about me. It was only when I, I said something that struck a nerve in somebody or made them think or made them feel like they could relate is when people actually started to really um, engage with me or have me a part of the conversation or want to hang out with me more. So like a mixture of going through these lows at the same time, being able to be vulnerable from the jump kind of mixed in together. So by the time I was in college, and again, like I was always this rebel too, because I didn't fit mm -hmm. in. So I naturally tell myself, you don't fit in these spaces. So by the time I got into, not even just college, high school and college, I started to really be the person who was like, I'm on my own path and I'm gonna just try to help the people that I can't help or help the people who are deemed weird or outsiders or all these different things. Because I felt like, that was the space that I was in. And I wanted to just make sure the people who also felt like me could feel that comfort around me. Right. That's so powerful. Um, I think it's funny. Me and Janelle talked to a few different people about, and we always kind of start off with the question of like, how did you get here? 
Mm -hmm. Um, And it's so crazy to think about how people's journeys have led them to do the work and be the people that they are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Um, And when you talked about, you know, why you started creating safe spaces, um, it made me think of our previous episode. We had a guest on um, who's about like purpose work. Mm -hmm. And she talked about how purpose kind of always comes from pain. Um, without pain, they're really, you can't, you don't usually get to your purpose. Like there's always a story behind it of some type of journey or some type of pain point that made you reevaluate or made you think of something or made you kind of shift the way um, that you engage or things of that nature. So I thought that was really powerful what you said. And it made me think of the previous episode, Purpose and Pain. Yeah, I wholeheartedly, I'm a firm believer, like you don't have purpose unless you have pain. And if Mm -hmm. you ask or talk to a lot of people, what they really want to do in life comes from a place of their own pain and trying Mm -hmm. to either make somebody not feel like that anymore or trying to fix that problem so nobody has to go through it. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with her wholeheartedly. And I just want to mention like just being open and transparent um, Mm -hmm. and just being vulnerable. That's very, very important as well um, in different aspects um, of life. And um, it's kind of crazy that you mentioned uh, it was just vulnerable from the jump. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that requires us to be vulnerable with strangers. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. sometimes some people shy away from that because they're like, oh, I don't want to be judged or criticized yeah. or anything like that. But um, I believe in being just open and transparent simply because you're going to be you regardless. You get what I'm saying? Nothing mm-hmm. they can do or say is going to ultimately change who you are right then and there. You get what I'm saying? What people tell you or say to you, of course, it can, you know, influence you. But um, I mean, you have nothing to lose at that point. Yeah. Mm, To me. (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy that you brought that up, Janelle, because I think a lot of people, um, they hold themselves back from doing certain things um, because they feel like, like you said, they're going to be judged um, and they don't want the repercussions are the things that come from being judged. But a lot of the times it's all in our mind. Like mm-hmm. we'll, we'll play these things in our mind and be like, Oh, so-and-so is going to say this, or they're not going to agree with this. And a lot of times it's like you said, Nigel, people are more relatable than you think they are. Mm-hmm. Um, or people are going to relate to things more than what you think they are going to relate to. Um, so can you talk a little bit about, you know, um, your journey to become more vulnerable and like where um, did you go through that time where you were like kind of in your head about certain things? So for me, it it really, a lot of people don't know this. Like they see me as a creative person, but they don't know. Like for me, it was always writing. And Mm -hmm. back in the day, I had a Tumblr and I would just vent on Tumblr. So I was one of those people who would like write how I'm feeling or different things like that. And from that, my writing kind of grew traction. And it wasn't like I was famous or nothing, but it was like people who would reach out and be like, yo, like I really, I appreciate what you said, or I really like that. Or I would Mm -hmm. like, growing up, I, I was one of those people who a lot of people came to for advice. And I never really understood why, but then when I really had time to unpack and break it down, it was because I was vulnerable. But I I will say is like, I think there's levels to vulnerability. And I think mine was very surface level, right? And to this day, it can be very surface level because I'm I'm vulnerable to a certain extent. Mm. And it's almost like a defense mechanism for me. So it's like, I can, I have no problem being open and transparent and giving it all out because if I get it all out there to Janelle's point, then you can't use it against me. True. Really continue to dig deep. If you really continue to ask questions, then that, that next level of vulnerability where it's like essential to my values or who I am or my beliefs or like that core identity vulnerability, that's where I personally struggle with. Like it's hard for me to open up about that. So I think like when I was younger, I I use vulnerability as a defense mechanism. Like if I can get it out here first, then hopefully somebody will like it or understand it or feel it. And then once you feel it, then all of a sudden, boom, we have this type of like friendship going on and then I won. But then what I noticed is like, as I was getting older, that it didn't always last, right? It was mm-hmm. like, I was cool with people and I was always cordial with people, but those, that longevity of relationship, of friendships, it didn't always necessarily last because the the vulnerability was so surface level. 
Mm. Um, so I think like it, in a way it was a blessing and a curse, but it I didn't re recognize it until I was older and going through therapy and having real conversations with myself and really breaking down and unpacking like, why am I doing this? Why is it so easy for me to open up? But you know, checks and balances. So it was good. Mm -hmm. There were moments where it really worked and there were moments that it wasn't. But I think those moments that it weren't, that fear of rejection was still very there, right? Mm -hmm. Like I always had that fear of rejection. I always had that fear of not being worthy. But the what worked for me is because I was an only child, I can always run away, right? I can always go into my own little um, hole or my own little safe space and I didn't have to deal with other people. So the rejection didn't seem as painful as if I had to continue to kind of like build and work on these certain relationships mm -hmm. past that point. Yeah, you brought up a lot in my head. My wheels were turning while you were talking. I was like, cause you know, I, we have these guests on and I always, um, I've always been one of those people to like self reflect. So like anytime mm -hmm. someone's talking or bringing up something that's kind of a newer concept to me, I'm like, okay, am I doing this in life? Is this something I should be doing? So when you talk, started talking about vulnerability um, in your process within it, it made me think about, and even like some of your friendships, you said until you really opened up, like you weren't connecting with people. Um, it would be like surface level. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about some of my friendships um, at a younger age. It's like, you know, it was easy for me to make friends, but it was harder for me to keep them. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like it was because people felt like I wasn't being vulnerable, but I'm one of those people. Um, when I was younger, I was very guarded. Um, yeah. I was... I really only opened up to my family. Um, and since, you know, me and Janelle doing this podcast, it's allowed me to open up a lot more about, you know, my personal life, my personal experiences. And it's something I've kind of always wanted to do, but I do think it's kind of that fear of like, you know, what's going to happen if I open up or people going to accept what I have to say and things of that nature. So that's powerful what you said. Like, I do think vulnerability is a huge thing um, when it comes to, you know, telling your, telling your stories. And, mm -hmm. you know, not some of us being like guarded and, you know, getting over that, that not getting over the, um, you know, the thought of the fear of and, you know, being more vulnerable with people. I think it, like you said, does help people to connect. Yeah. I feel like you just have to be like comfortable mm -hmm. with expressing it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And um, I like that pretty like straight, straight on, you know, um, I was raised in a household where I'm the youngest. So <clears throat> you kind of learn from, from your siblings and then your parents also teach you things too. And so one thing, um, one experience that actually happened is my mom had breast cancer. So I had to deal with the ins and outs of that. But um, right then and there, it really allowed me to be like, you know what, speak how you feel. You know, um, it doesn't matter if it hurts anybody else, mm -hmm. because in that moment you're speaking your truth and how you feel. And you have to be comfortable um, with people hearing the good in the bad. Um, and not only do you have to feel comfortable with them hearing the good in the bad, but if you don't, then you're going to feel some type of way towards them. You get what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. that's a whole different other subject. <laughs> yeah. So I just say you have to be comfortable with just speaking your truth and really just being in you. And um, that's that's really where it is. It's just... How yeah. comfortable are you expressing yourself? So I I agree with that. I think my only pushback of that is that I think at certain points, you have to learn how to navigate how to be comfortable and live your truth while accepting the responsibility that your actions also have consequences, right? Right. And things that you say, because there's, there's times in myself where... I can, I would be vulnerable with somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And then they mm -hmm. would, in return, they would be vulnerable back to me. And then I can make the decision in order to continue to be vulnerable or to kind of like end it and not be um, as honest or like, oh, we already have this kind of established friendship. I can ignore your vulnerability and kind of just go past it, right? But that, by doing that, I'm not, I'm not taking, acknowledging the responsibility that your feelings or whatever you just told me also is your truth too. And mm -hmm. like, because I'm living my truth doesn't mean I can completely diminish your truth. And I think when we're talking about vulnerability or even storytelling, that's kind of 
the weird middle ground where a lot of people struggle with, right? It's mm -hmm. like, I have this story and my story might go completely against what you believe in and how you feel and who you are as a person. Should I still tell my story, right? Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I don't have an answer. I can't say like, oh yeah, or oh no. But I think that's where things get murky, or at least for me, that's where I've always been murky. It's like, I wanna live my truth, but I wanna live my truth that's not at the expense of how somebody else feels or what mm -hmm. somebody else is going through. Because at the end of the day, like we're all going through something and we just happen mm -hmm. to be living around each other going through something. So it's like, perfect example. It's like if you and your friend were dating and then they break up, right? And there's two stories and both stories have a different angle of who's wrong and who's right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will choose sides because it's like, I agree with this story completely, I, my loyalty to you, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's like, there's two truths in here. So who's who's really living their truth when they're both coming to you with that actual truth? So for me, it's like, I don't know, to that point of like being comfortable, I, I agree you have to be comfortable, but at what point do we take responsibility also? You know what I mean? It's right. The, yeah, it's a double edged sword. Um, mm -hmm. I totally agree with you because you may be telling us your truth, but someone else is involved in the story. So they have a different angle. I think it comes a lot when people um, start writing books and things of that nature, like tell alls. Um, yeah. You'll hear a lot of people's sides of the story, but you're not the only person there. There's always, you know, your side, mm -hmm. someone else's side and the actual truth. Um, so, yeah, it, it's hard. I do still, you know, push people to, you know, own own your story you know tell your story you know it's it's therapy in a sense like me and janelle have talked about it multiple times like this podcast for us is therapy we're able to sit here and talk through our own issues like i said earlier i'm reevaluating some things that i did when i was younger and maybe some things i'm still doing um so yeah it, it, it's crazy um but since you talked about we talked a lot about comfortability um recently nigel um well for a while you've been doing some late nights with nigel um, where you jump on IG live with a special guest and you talk about anything from relationships to mindset or mental health. So my question for you is outside of how comfortable did you get in sharing your own stories? How did you get comfortable in inquiring and probing about other people's stories? Yeah. So that's a great question. Um, for me personally, I'm always, I've always been a curious person. I'm the type <laughs> of person like I'll keep asking why until somebody gives me a good enough explanation where it makes sense to me. But also too, I, I think you really get to know people when you ask the right questions and you really get to get asked them those questions that are um, really make them think and reflect on themselves or their experiences rather than kind of like simple questions. So like my curiosity, I'm always going to ask people the questions because I want to know who you are as a person. Again, like because it was hard for me to make small talk with people and have these like very um, surface level friendships. I always strive to go deeper with people and really build deeper. So when it comes to like the late night show, I feel like I have to set the foundation for everybody else. So if I'm mm. the person who opens up first, then that automatically leaves, creates the space for other people to want to open up if they're willing. And then mm -hmm. if they're willing to open up, then my curiosity checks in because that's when it's like, oh, this is a really interesting perspective. I love right. what you said and what you said is so valid, but now I wanna know why you said that. Where does that come from? How did you get to that point? And for me, it, like I, it's the who, what, where, how, and why of a person. Like I wanna try to figure out all of these things on this late night show for whoever I bring in to really understand like, how did you come to this opinion about this topic because for mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of people have beliefs a lot of people have opinions but rarely do we ever take the time to understand why they have them and i think mm -hmm. i got that from being an unconscious bias trainer for a couple of years um you really dig deep and understand that people's background really is the reason why they are who they are today and right. i'm always curious about that journey to like the the extent of y'all are doing as far as like this podcast and really understand so like who are you how'd you get there where do you want to go i'm 100 percent the same way like i really want to know how did you become this person that you are right now and what are what are your experiences what do you think are your experiences 
Mm -hmm. And then being able to help people really break down their experiences and understand like, this is exactly why I think you are dope and you are great and an amazing human being. And like, I absolutely love that you came on here and shared that because I think we don't, we don't get that enough too, as people. I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah, I loved everything that you said. I was just sitting here like processing everything. And sometimes I just have to sit and process what people are saying. But yeah, I completely agree with you on all of it. Um, so in storytelling, usually there's an end product, no matter what the medium looks like. Um, and we always put out, you know, like a nice, neat, like it looks like it was effortless, you know, whatever we produced. Mm -hmm. But there's always a journey um, when bringing a creative idea or concept to life. Can you talk a little bit about your journey to produce one of your creative concepts? It doesn't matter what it is, but can you talk a little bit about like your journey, maybe some struggles, you know, some highs, lows, whatever that may be? Yeah, so I, I'll talk about the late night show because I think it's the most relevant and most recent thing I've done. Okay. And to be honest with you, I would say like my journey was, I, I always wanted to do some type of like videography or hosting or um, just something that allows me to be able to talk to people or create things that make people feel some type of way. Mm -hmm. And I and it started with in college. I really, my first goal when I got to college was like to be a businessman. But then math one hundred and nine absolutely destroyed all my dreams. Like same, math same. Math one hundred and nine was the devil, the demon, all of that. Um, <laughs> you seem high as good big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like math one hundred and nine. Nah, that killed me. So mm -hmm. then I was like, yo, what I really want to do is just, I want to become a radio host. I was really influenced by Breakfast Club. Like, if mm -hmm. you ask my friends, I watch Breakfast Club interviews mm -hmm. all day, every day. Like, I I love watching interviews. It's one of my favorite pastimes. So I was like, yo, I really want to get into the radio industry. But I was so focused on serving the community or underground perspective or doing other things that I never really positioned myself to get into a path that would help me get to the radio, mm -hmm. right? So by the time I graduated, I was like, yo, I have no path to the radio. Podcast was starting to boom. So I was like, yo, I'm gonna start a podcast. Um, I started a podcast and as y'all know, it's it's definitely a long grind, right? Mm -hmm. like some days you got people tuning in. Like the first episode, everybody's excited. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to support you. Episode two, three, four, the numbers go down. By the time you're on episode 10, you only have about two or three listeners. Yep. And it starts to grow. Um, but for me, it was just like, I made this podcast. I had some really cool guests. I enjoyed the conversation, but it just wasn't, my expectations were too high, right? I was mm -hmm. hoping that first episode was going to carry me forever. You know what I'm saying? Like I would get that same number and it would grow. Um, so I got to a place where honestly, I was like, yeah, I, I'm, I can't do this no more. Like it's draining my mental health. I'm uh, feeling bad because I'm not getting the results I am. I give up, I quit, I'm done mm -hmm. with it, right? I'm done, I'm over it. But then I would always have friends who would hit me and be like, and not even friends, like people who, strangers who would tune in and be like, yo, like, why'd you stop? We was listening to it, I really wanna hear it. So then I made another one with my home girl and we were kind of just, you know, getting the vibe, learning technology, feeding off everybody's vibe. And that one was like a lot of fun because it was like, we would bounce off each other's uh, points and whatnot. And then mm -hmm. we brought all these different people and we had these cool conversations. But for me, it was it was a great experience, but it wasn't it, right? It, mm -hmm. it didn't feel like it was 100% what the angle I wanted to do. So when quarantine hit, um, I was really just bored and I did this interview series where I was just, I would literally like shoot cold emails to people who I thought were cool or like did dope work or whatever and reach out just to see what would happen. And some of the people got back to me and they were like, yeah, we'd love to be a part of the podcast or your interview or whatever, whatever. And I started to kind of get more comfortable talking to people who I had no idea who they were or no clue what they were doing or, um, you know, people who just seemed like they had a cool story. So from mm -hmm. that, I kind of got to this point where when I came back into um, this PhD program and I started, I was so focused on school, I wasn't doing nothing creative. And I was like, I don't have time to make films. I don't have the time to do these big productions. Why don't I just do some type of like talk show? And I promise you like on a random Thursday or Friday, I was like, I'm gonna do a talk show today. 
So I made a poll. I seen if like, hey, if I did a talk show with people tune in, people said, yeah. And I was like, all right, bet. Let me just try it. And, you know, using the experience of the failures of what I learned when I did a podcast with my friend or where I was doing the two different ones by myself, I kind of brought all that experience together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just let the energy kind of take over and gave people the space to come and talk about these topics that I always felt like people don't necessarily talk about and just get other people's opinions. It really, honestly, it wasn't really even for me to talk or share what I thought. It was, my whole point of the show was really just to get other people to come on here and share their opinions and share their beliefs and perspectives. And then me try to creatively tie everybody's um, stories together in a way that when we get to the end, it's like this huge takeaway of all these steps from all these different stories. So it was, for me, it was really just like a creative, um, therapeutic getaway from doing PhD work because this stuff is get to. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no, nah, it was, it's, it's been a cool journey and I haven't been as consistent. Uh, I was doing every Friday and then I kind of did every other Friday and now I just do it whenever I get some time. But yeah, that's kind of like the journey of how I got to the to the talk show. That's crazy because I feel like a lot of um, creatives in general are just even people that do podcasts. They have like you were just literally outlining the process for a podcast, to be honest, like how you even broke it down. Like, you know, you have that first episode. Like, yeah, me and Janelle had that first episode. We had hundreds of views that, you know, it just slowly goes down and then you just wait for it to come up. But you definitely have to be just like if that's if that's the medium you want to go into, I definitely agree. You just have to kind of be dedicated to it. Um, but can you talk a little bit more about like some of the success you've probably seen from, um, you know, the podcasting specifically use that example recently? Because I feel like there's been a lot more views that you've gotten recently. You've had some dynamic guests on as well. Um, so can you, can you talk a little bit more about that specifically? Yeah, I would say like the one thing I would I hope like people take away is like, again, to your point, it's a journey, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm there are going to be lows and there are going to be times when people don't tune in and you'll have a fire episode and you feel like you poured your heart out and you mm -hmm. said everything off your chest and you're like, yo, this is going to be a one. And then it does absolutely nothing. And I think for me, I had to remove myself from that mentality of like, this is the one. No, this episode is going to be one, the one. And for me, I had to get to a place where it's like, I just want to have fun, right? Right. I just have a good time. I just want to create something that I know I'm going to enjoy and hopefully the people who come on will enjoy. So like some of the success I had was just really being able to have people come up and really feel safe and feel comfortable being able to share their stories and being able to share their perspectives and not feel as if I am telling them what to think or what to do, but like really just giving them the space to be like, yo, let's talk about this. Like, mm -hmm. let's, let's really talk about this. Relationships, how do you feel about relationships? Oh, you're struggling? Why? This is why I feel like I'm struggling. Oh, wow, you're going through this too? And I think, like, I, I'm not one to put one guest over another or anything, but I know I'm doing a great job when somebody completely random mm. on there feels comfortable enough to open up to me, who's a stranger to them, and really be able to have these conversations in a healthy way, right? Like, mm -hmm. that's the one thing I could definitely take pride of. These conversations have all been healthy. It has never been somebody coming to bash somebody or to say something negative or anything like that. There's some people who come up here and who are genuinely like, this is how I feel. These are my experiences. This is what I bring to the table with this conversation. Thank you for allowing me this space. And it's really me thanking them for even coming up here because at the end of the day, nobody owes me anything, right? Like, right. I can do this. I can invite people randomly. Like, I literally randomly click on names and they could say no, and some people do. But when people do take the time or when they're in the comments and they're not um, making fun of each other or having genuine conversation, that's to me when it's like, yo, this is actually a really amazing thing. Mm-hmm. That's and I just feel like I'm um, a bit. You good? Go ahead. Oh, so basically, it's like growth and development all over again. You get what I'm saying? It's like you're planting the seed and you're really fostering that growth and really having them sit down and be like, you know what? I need to do this different. Or maybe I should try this. Hmm. Thank you. You get what I'm saying?
And it's like all yeah. growth and development simply because you're like, oh, okay, well, now that I did this, I can do this now. Or maybe at first I was just like, I'm not doing this at all, but now I'm open to it simply because he stated that this was a success for him, you know, mm -hmm. if he went mm -hmm. about it this way. So it's just all about growth and development. I really like that aspect of everybody just growing, teaching and sharing. And that's yeah. pretty much what it's about. Mm -hmm. And to mm -hmm. that point, like none of us are experts, right? Like, right. Mm -hmm. Nobody who comes onto this show is, is an expert in any of this. Like I might mm -hmm. come with some statistics just to prove a point or to kind of highlight the issue or what's going on. But it's like, I really just come from a place of like, this is my story. These are my experiences. Here it is. And then other people do that too. And I think the beauty to your point, Janelle, is that when people do that, it's, Sometimes that uh, the advice that you get or the encouragement you hear from somebody else really hits in a way that it changes your whole perspective on things. Mm -hmm. Like I remember one of the conversations we had where we were talking about sex. And sex is something that not everybody's comfortable talking about, right? But through that conversation, I was able to reflect after it on one, how I was taught about sex and how unhealthy mm -hmm. that was, but also why it's important for me to be able to really understand how to be a healthier partner or a healthier communicator or healthy in general when it has sex, right? When it comes to having sex, talking about sex, being with somebody. And that goes same with relationships or same with friendships. Or we had this talk about family and one of the, the, the takeaways I have to this day, and we did this in like December, is that just because somebody's your family doesn't mean that you have a relationship with them. They just have the title family. And you have mm -hmm. to be able, just like your friendships, you have to build relationships with different family members. And each relationship is gonna look different. The relationship I have with my mom will always be different than the one I have with my dad, always be different than the ones that I have with my aunt. But that's something I didn't necessarily think about until we were having this conversation about how everybody communicates different. And it's little takeaways like that that I hope other people take away with but if not at the end of the day i take away from it because i'll be sitting there like man y'all really bring these points that like hey y'all need to write y'all need to write some books because wow i didn't even think about that but to me that's the beauty of storytelling that's the beauty of perspective that comes from storytelling when mm -hmm. people tell stories you hear a perspective and that mm -hmm. perspective might resonate or it might not but when it does resonate whoo, it's gonna hit it's mm -hmm. your whole way of thinking. Yeah, yeah that's we use this phrase called. Well, I'm so sorry. Amy. Go ahead. No, we use go this ahead. Phrase called dropping gems. That's basically what it is. Mm -hmm. They're dropping gems. And I know last last week episode, I was just like, oh my god, she's talking to me. Oh my god, we were oh, silent. Jesus, she's coming for me. <laughs> yes, we were silent last week. Uh, you guys, shout out if you haven't watched last week's episode. Make sure you go and watch that. Um, but yeah, we were literally silent. Like she, when I tell you, there are certain people. Um, she was speaking about purpose and pain, but she was speaking about it from, um, you know, kind of like the godly perspective, but it was real relatable. It wasn't like she was sitting there preaching to us. She was just yeah. having a conversation with us about her personal journey and things that she's kind of come across. But when I tell you, I was literally mute sitting here, just writing notes, just typing throughout her whole like segment because it was just, A, it was so relatable. It made me reflect. Um, and it just made me think about everything that I personally was doing. Um, and I think that's also why we call ourselves an empowerment podcast instead of like self-help or some of these other titles that are out there, because we're just here to have conversations with our guests, let them take the lead. We may probe some questions. We might put in our own like insight or things we've went through, but it's really for our viewers and watchers to just listen, uh, you know, reevaluate if you want to take what you can take from it, but it's empowering you to make change. We're not sitting here telling you the steps and how to do this and nine steps to do that. Like, no. We're just giving you information that we've learned on our way. Like Nigel said, we're not experts here. We're just trying to empower people or encourage people in their own journeys. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of it because it's like a lot of people play the expert game. And I feel like I just, life is just so wild, right? Mm -hmm. Like every day things change. You know what I'm saying? Every day we change. I don't mm -hmm. know how I can be an expert on all these topics 
right? Without the help of other people, right? Like it's not all, right. I don't know all this. And it's different. It might be different in science and math fields. Again, I'm not good at math 109. <laughs> I don't want to a conversation. But like when it comes to life, the one thing that I, that I know for myself is that it's constantly changing. I'm constantly growing. And so are all the people around me. So it's like just giving people the opportunities to have the space to be able to have real conversations and be able to share their stories and share their experiences to me, it's life changing. It's mm -hmm. always been life changing for me. Like, I'm one of those people. If somebody opens up and tells me something that I never once thought about, from that day on, I will forever be changed. Forever, right. because it's in my, it's in the back of my head, and it might be the empath in me. It might be the person who just loves people. But it's like once I know, I have no choice but to do better. And I think yeah. that's the beauty of spaces and podcasts like this. It's once the knowledge is out there, what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. Well, it is time for our This or That segment. Um, so, Nigel, we do this fun segment. It's called This or That, we'll, where we give you 10 statements. So we might say, um, do you like going on a beach or would you want to go on a cruise? And you have to pick one and defend your answer. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the fun thing about it or that makes it fun is you have 90 seconds to get through all 10. Oh, say less. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so okay. let me get the little timer. We already have 10 questions for you. And Janelle, you tell me when you're ready. All right. I'm ready, MB. Go ahead. All right. Listener or talker? Listen all day. I'd rather listen. You have two ears for a reason and one mouth. Boom. Nice. Photography or videography? Videography. What you see is a lot more powerful um, in motion than what you see that's still. Love it. Planner or go with the flow? Go with the flow all day, every day. Free spirit gang, we out here. <laughs> <laughs> Truth or dare? Uh, I'm a dare person. Uh, give me a dare any day. I'm with it. Coffee or tea? Tea all day. Coffee is overrated. I don't know why y'all addicted. It's like a cigarette. <laughs> y'all need to chill and drink some tea. <laughs> uh, twin or clone? Uh, ooh, uh, clone, because I watched Star Wars, Attack of the Clones, and I feel like if I had a hell of clones behind me, it'd be lit. <laughs> interview or tell all? Uh, uh, ooh, interview, because interviews are conversation. A good interview is conversational. Tell all, I don't want to tell all my business. I want to be able it to come out naturally. Adventurous or cautious? Oh, adventurous. The, life, the world is a big place, and you just got to be able to explore it. Mm. Single or taken? I'm single as a dollar bill. Ladies, if you're single, you know what I mean? Slide in the DMs, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one. Working alone or working with a team? Oh, that's tough. I'm going to say right now working alone because you're, you can focus in a different way, but yeah. Look at you. I think you are only our second guest to get all 10 out of 10 in 90 seconds. Perfect timing. Oh, yeah. I'm, listen, I'm, I'm all for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for indulging us in this fun little game of this or that. Okay. So um, we did want to ask you, because um, we do, you know, we have some people who have reached out to us about, you know, creative avenues, whether that be podcasting or, you know, that, you know, they want to be a photographer or things of that nature. So what advice do you have for someone who wants to be a creative, no matter of medium? Start now, just do mm -hmm. it. Um, whatever avenue, whatever field or whatever field you want to do, literally just do it. Start now, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to know everything that you need to know. Um, just start and learn as you go. And I think that that also speaks on life. Like when we're born, we don't just naturally learn how to walk, right? Mm. We crawl, we fall, but we don't stop. And then we learn how to walk. And I think that's one thing that I've been trying to remind myself is that whatever you want to do, you don't have to be perfect in it to start. Mm. But you have to start in order to be perfect in something, right? Um, so just start now, learn as you go. Don't worry what other people think. Don't worry about other people's perceptions. Um, some people are going to support you. Most people aren't. Most of your friends are gonna support you day one. And then the next couple of days, you don't see them around. 
and you get more love from strangers and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But you, at the end of the day, like what you can control is starting now and then being consistent. And consistency doesn't mean every day. It doesn't mean every other day. Consistent means whenever you got the time, whenever you want to make the time for it, to do it. But you'll never be able to be creative. You'll never be able to get to anywhere that you want to in life if you don't start. Mm. That's good advice. Nigel, you just dropped six gems, like six of them. <laughs> All in that, I'm like, oh, dang. I like that. I like that. I'm going to have to the one with the baby. You have to crawl before you walk and you're going to fall a couple times. I'm going to steal that. I'm just letting you know. Uh, but <laughs> so, uh, but no, like that's something I've been actually, somebody recently asked me like, what would you tell your younger self? Mm. And I'm a firm believer, like if you regret anything, it's because it, there's a lesson in it that you haven't learned yet. Right. Mm -hmm. And one thing I, I was definitely regretting with a lot of this stuff is like, why didn't I start now? Right. Why I haven't, if I was to have start when I was 10 or 11 or whatever, when I knew I wanted to do this or I was curious about it, then where would it take me now? And I think like the lesson I had to learn that is one, you have to give yourself grace. And that's like the second part, like give yourself that grace to understand, like even if you haven't started now and you're starting in your thirties or forties or 20, whatever, as long as you start, that's all that matters because you'll make up for the lost time because you're already on your time. Right. 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 Do it. So you're not, you're not making up for missed time. You're not doing all that. You're, you're on your time. So like being able to give myself the grace, but just understanding like whatever it is, you can start and do it. And you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to have this high quality, whatever. But as long as you're starting and you're just getting your feet wet with it, you're that's all you can yeah. really do. I couldn't agree more. Um, and just to add on, there's learning and failure. And I don't even want to use failure because I feel like that's too harsh of a word. But like I've, you know, I've told the get the guests and the listeners on the podcast before, you know, I'm 26 and I've already had two failed businesses. But I've learned so much in those two failures that I've been able to take to, you know, what I'm doing now and some other passion projects that I have coming up. Um, so yeah, I've I've learned a lot. If I wouldn't have gone through those processes, I wouldn't be where I am today. Same to what you said. If if you feel like you regret something, you haven't learned from that situation. You haven't been able to take something from it. So I I couldn't agree more. And to your point, name a movie or a show or any story where there's no type of failure. There's mm -hmm. no type of conflict. There's no type of anything. Perfect stories don't exist. Right. They don't exist. You have to have conflict. You have to have failure. And that goes with your story too. Like you have to go through those motions. So like failure is not even a bad word. Failure is something that honestly we all need to start having a more positive relationship with because it's in failure that you become successful. You don't learn from always winning. If you win all the time, what are you learning? Right. Winning. Like you have to fail. You have to mess up. You have to push yourself to the absolute limit in order to understand how far not only have you come, but you still have to go and where you can go. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I would strongly encourage everybody to start trying to build a more positive relationship with failure. Mm hmm. Couldn't agree more. Okay, so this brings us to the end of our episode. Um, before we shout out any things you're working on, Nigel, or future projects, uh, is there anything else that you want to mention um, or any like lasting thoughts when it comes to our topic today of storytelling? Yeah, the, the one thing that I'll definitely just leave everybody on is just to understand like you control the pen for your life mm -hmm. and you're constantly in the process of writing your chapters, right? So like if you think of your life as a book and you're continuing to write it, reflect on how your previous chapters, however old you are, the previous chapters have been. Reflect on how you feel about them, if you're proud of them, if you're not proud. And then whatever it is, accept it. Accept it, but understand that now you're in a position to write the rest of your life. And it's up to you to write something that when that, that book is closed, that you can walk away and be proud of and happy of. So when it comes to our story, stories, you control your narrative. So you just have to be confident in how you're writing your narrative. And it's not always gonna be pretty. Again, it's gonna be ugly. There's gonna be some some moments, some chapters you don't want people to read. You know what I mean? There's gonna be some chapters 
where, you know, it, it, it's going to be hard to really go through it. But when it's all said and done, when you look back at your story, you should be able to look back and smile to see how far you've come and how amazing you are. So just being able to understand that you control your narrative and nobody else does is the one thing I wish I 100,000% knew when I was younger. Snap, snaps. <laughs> yes. Um, so before I go into uh, future projects, you know, is there anything else, they, uh, questions, anything else? I don't want to cut you off. No, Nigel dropped the gym. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nigel, so tell us, what are you working on? What future projects you have coming up and where can we find you? Yes, yeah, so future projects right now in <laughs> pre-production, um, I'm planning on doing writing a short film and mm. filming and directing it for the summer where I'm going to star in it, hopefully, or be in it. Um, I haven't wrote, grad school is just so ugly, y'all. It, it, it is, <laughs> I encourage everybody to, you know, get your education. But when you're in grad school, I'm, I'm sitting in a special prayer because it's ugly. So mm -hmm. right now, um, my project is just getting through the semester. Um, but after that, you know, definitely focusing on the film and television industry, trying to get um, work on that. So taking acting classes and, okay. you know, just, just trying to be the best person I can be. Mm -hmm. And so like, as far as future projects go, just follow me on Instagram at Nigel Marcellus, Twitter at Nigel Marcellus. And on my page, you'll probably see something that I'm working on. But beyond that, I'm just, I'm just trying to make it through the semester, y'all. Uh, I know that's right. No, Grand school was not kind. <laughs> it, is not kind. it is not. Well, you guys, make sure, like he said, go follow him at Nigel Marcellus on Instagram and Twitter. Um, also, if you want to check out any of his previous episodes of Late Night with Nigel, he has them all. You have them all up on IG, right? Yeah, IGTV. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, he's had some, like I said, he's had some dynamic conversations with a lot of different guests. So you definitely want to check that out. Ooh, um, one more thing. Go ahead. And last thing, oh my goodness, how could I forget? I need to shout out MB and Janelle. Y'all's podcast is amazing. Y'all's dynamic is amazing. I'm so thankful for even having the opportunity to come up on here and to be able to speak. And I just want to know, like, want y'all to know, I absolutely love what y'all doing. Keep going. If nobody has told you, this today has been the best thing that has happened to me all week. So I greatly, greatly appreciate y'all for creating this space for not just me, but everybody else to be able to share their story. So y'all are dope. And I hope you both know that. Oh, thank you, thank you Nigel. Nigel. Thank you. That means You're a lot. So sweet. It does. That means I'm a lot. Telling you. Yeah, y'all doing it. Just keep going. Please yeah. keep going. That's the, we gonna keep going, shoot. <laughs> we, have, we have a purpose, but we, we gotta keep going. Uh, so you guys, thank you for riding with us through this episode. We definitely appreciate you guys. Um, you know, if you wanna influence the conversation, if you wanna just dialogue with us, you know there's two ways you can converse with us. The first one is go on over to our IG page at Being Becoming Podcast. Um, we post who's going to be our guest um, a few days in advance of the episode. We also post what our show topic is going to be. So again, if you have any questions for the show topic or for the guest or just some things you want us to even re-review from previous episodes, feel free to send us a DM at Being Becoming Podcast. Um, also, second way you can engage with us is we are on Clubhouse every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Central. Got you, girl. I got, I got you covered, you know. Uh, <laughs> so um, feel free to jump in the room. Um, we have a club now. It is Being Becoming um, on Clubhouse. That's the club, Being Becoming. Um, so we have, again, a room every Thursday, and we talk about that week's episode. Sometimes we have our guests on. Sometimes we don't. But we just go into, you know, a deeper conversation. And we invite everyone onto the stage to share their input, maybe share their life journey, Talk about anything that you want to do, talk about when it comes to this week's topic. Um, so again, thank you guys so much for listening to the episode. Um, if you want to follow me personally, you can follow me on IG at I'm just MB. And you can follow me at Beautiful J. And we will see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs>